So there's this trend on the internet that has actually been going on for a while now that is based on people building structures using this one mechanical principle. Now that principle is called tensegrity. And in case you haven't heard of it before, it is what makes structures like these possible. Now at a first glance, this whole thing looks like it shouldn't be possible. The structure here looks like the top is just floating on its own, just supported by flimsy pieces of string that aren't supposed to be able to hold up anything. Now the way it actually works is that the whole top structure here is actually just hanging from the string in the middle. And the three other strings on the outside are just held in tension, making sure that the top part doesn't fall over. Now this is just a pretty flimsy model I quickly put together using some wooden sticks and some super glue, but it demonstrates the principle really well. Now people have been building a lot of really cool projects with this type of structure, but there's one thing that always seems to remain an issue. And that is that inherently these structures are pretty wobbly and you can actually, if you push them too far, make the whole thing collapse. Now I wanna make a coffee table using this principle, but I really don't wanna make one that runs the risk of falling over just if you bump it too hard. And then I watched one of James Bruton's recent videos where he uses tensegrity structures to actually build a robot. I'll leave that video link down below, it's really cool. But in that video, he talked about the fact that there's a lot of different variations of this principle called tensegrity. People have even built like massive sculptures that used all of the same techniques. So I went on the internet, figured out how to put together a couple of other types of structures and started experimenting with things like this. <laughs> now this structure I think is really, really cool. It uses all the same principles with a bunch of strings holding everything in tension and none of the wooden sticks in the middle here are actually touching. And surprisingly enough, this thing is really, really stable. Like this won't collapse at all. But there is one issue with this. And that is that if I want to use it as a table, I discovered that it's almost like a spring. So although it could take a fair bit of load, it really doesn't take much to make it move a little bit. Now, preferably, I don't really want a springy coffee table. So I tried a couple of other things. And this thing works in the same exact way. There's just five of those sticks. None of the sticks are touching and everything is held in tension and the structure itself seems to be really stable until you put something on it and it's just even more springy. And although I'm sure this could be useful for some applications, it really won't make for a good coffee table. And now onto the part where I actually think that we have a viable solution. I made this thing. Key difference here being that the wooden sticks actually touch and yes, I know that that isn't as cool as these structures that don't have anything touching, but in order to make a table that is actually gonna be functional, I think this is the way to go. Because this thing is pretty stable. And one more really cool thing is that I discovered that the pieces of string here that I was using in this model to keep the wooden sticks from touching aren't really needed in this one. So you can get away with having even fewer strings, making this a really floppy and flimsy structure that you wouldn't think that can take any sort of load. But as soon as you put load on it, everything tightens up. And I think this is gonna make for a great coffee table. So all that's left to do is to make a scaled up version of this thing. I'm really curious to see if this thing will actually work out. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Let's get started building. All right, so since I wanna make this thing out of something a bit more sturdy than broomstick, oh, I think I wanna make it out of oak. Now I have conveniently got, well, I guess it depends on how you define convenient, but I've got this massive piece of oak. I'm gonna turn this thing into five individual round pieces of oak round stock. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna start by cutting this big thing into a couple of more manageable chunks of wood, and then we'll use our lathe to turn that into round stock. All right, it's time to turn this square piece of oak into a round one. And yep, still doing it on my metalworking lead. <laughs> I didn't actually plan this, but this piece is just the right length for the maximum that my lathe can take. This is how much space is left on the side here. All right, let's get this party started. Well, 
that worked out pretty well. So the last time I made legs on this lathe, I discovered that I can just set the right diameter in the beginning here, set the feed real slow, and then do the entire thing in just one pass. That way I could just basically watch it for 10 minutes and it's done. Now before I take it off the lathe again, I'm actually gonna turn a little shoulder on either side of this table leg for a little extra bit that will sit on either side of the leg to make the table look a little bit nicer. I'll explain more of that once we start assembling the whole thing, but for now we'll just finish turning this and then do that four more times. All right, and with that, after making a huge mess on our lathe, we finally got all our five legs. Now, let me quickly show you what the shoulders that we turned on either side one of these is actually for. I've yet again gone ahead and printed a whole bunch of parts. I printed two different parts. They look pretty similar. The only difference is that one of them has a bigger flat spot and one of them has a smaller. And each one of these is gonna go on either side of these legs, creating what I think is gonna be a much nicer look for the way this whole thing is gonna go together. So instead of the legs just kind of resting on the floor like this, just on this tiny little edge, they will now have a much bigger flat spot that will flushly sit up against the floor. And the same thing that will hold the glass up on the top side here. Now already, we're really not that far away from starting to assemble these. The only thing that we're missing is some way to attach the string, or the metal wire in this case, to all these sticks. Now, as opposed to the model here that we made that attached all of them to just the ends, on these, I wanna attach the string a lot closer to the center. That is just to hide the wire a bit more and increase the illusion of this whole thing just kind of resting or floating on top of each other. So the next step is going to be to drill two holes to the center of these sticks so that we can feed our wire through there. But instead of just drilling the hole straight through and then feeding the wire through, which I think would work, but would eventually end up with the wire kind of digging into the wood, I'm gonna do something that I think is gonna look much nicer. So I've got this brass rod here, and my plan is to drill a hole that's big enough for this brass rod to fit through the piece of wood, then I'm gonna drill a hole through the brass rod that will fit the wire, effectively just making a tiny little tube, and that will be a sleeve that the wire can ride in. So the next step is to drill those holes over at the milling machine. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, which is Phantom Wallet. Phantom Wallets come in three different sizes with a variety of different finishes and accessories. They come in two different product lines, the Phantom S, which is made out of rubberized plastic, and the Phantom R, which is made out of ceramic coated aluminum. You can add on a variety of different accessories, everything from this key holder to this cash holder, an ID holder, coin holder, silicone band, and even a tracker. And no matter what accessory you go with, you can always add on this money clip as well. Check out my link in the description below and use coupon code CHAPEL for 10% off. All right, so over here at the milling machine, the next step is to drill those holes straight through the center of these round stocks. So that means that we need to find the center of this thing. Luckily, I've got a DRO, so I could just set this thing into the edge, turn this guy on, set Y to the radius of my tool, then I can move over 22 and a half, which is the center of my 25 millimeter round stock. And you know what? Next step is just drill them. And now the cool thing about this milling machine is that it has a power feed, so I can just hold a button and wait for it to go over to the other side where I want to drill the other hole. Pretty cool, huh? All right, that was all five done. Now it's back to the lathe to make those brass inserts. And I just finished cleaning this huge mess that I made on the lathe, and now we're gonna make a mess again. I have my piece of six mil brass rod here that we're just gonna insert into the chuck and start making these sleeves. And I think I've got everything I need set up here already. So in the chuck here, I've already got a center drilling bit. This guy is gonna ensure that we end up drilling in the exact center of our brass rod and so that the drill bit that we're gonna use in the end doesn't end up wandering about. Now I have two of these drill bits. After I do the spot drilling, I'm gonna start off with the short one, drill that as far as I can go, and then finish the hole to the full depth with this really long one. And we'll have to do it in that order so that we have any chance of getting a two millimeter hole 
45 millimeters deep. And then to finish it off, we'll just part it off with this parting tool. And now to the very last step to get rid of that little nubbin, we'll just put it back in here the other way around. And I'm gonna use my spot drill to make a nice little chamfer on that hole. All right, so let's see if this works. We've got 10 little pins that we're now gonna try and press in to the holes we're just drilled. And I'm gonna use my drill press as a arbor press. I really hope this works. Oh, ah, it's going in. <laughs> wow, look at that! Is that so cool? And here's the real test. Will a wire, haha, <laughs> a wire fits through. <laughs> All right, so it's the next day. After I pressed in the inserts into our legs, I sanded everything to make sure that everything was nice and smooth. And then I gave all the parts a nice coat of oil. So that when we now go to assemble all the parts, I don't need to worry about applying finish to the wooden parts after the fact. Talking about assembling, we could basically do that right now. But since the wire is now able to slide freely inside of these inserts, I'm a little worried that that could create problems for us in the future. You see, just like with this scale model, changing the lengths of the individual pieces of string can create some potentially weird geometry here. And I'm a little worried that that is gonna create an unstable table. Ah, that rant. So to fix that, I want some way of locking the wire in place once everything is aligned properly. But I don't want that to be a visible feature from the outside, so to solve that, I've got some long drill bits. So I'm gonna use these long drill bits to drill all the way through the center of these legs, all the way down to the brass insert. I then wanna screw in one of these brass inserts so that I can screw in a screw and lock the position of the wire in place after everything is aligned. Now to make sure that these holes end up perfectly straight, I'm gonna try out something. Now, I haven't actually tried this before, but my thinking is that I can use the top half of my drill press and then swing it around so that I can use my bench mice mounted to the table here, clamp the leg in place underneath the head, and then I can use the drill press to drill the holes super deep into the table legs. And then I just need to make sure that the leg is perfectly parallel to our head. I'm gonna do that with this little angle gauge that I'm gonna zero on the table here. And now I can use it on the side here. Make sure that that is zero. Tighten this guy up. Now we drill our hole. See if this works. I don't know. I mean, there was some brass that came out of the hole, so I think. I'm deep enough. Right, we've got our hole in the top that goes all the way down to the brass part here. And that hole is the perfect size to screw in that insert. However, I don't really want to screw that insert all the way down here. So I'm gonna use a bigger drill bit, drill part of the way down so that I just need to screw the insert the rest of the way. All right, let's see if this works. Here's the plan. I'm gonna take this little brass threaded insert and use a flat screwdriver to hopefully screw that in the appropriate sized hole that we drilled in the bottom here. Oh, hopefully without breaking anything. Then I'll take an M5 bolt and screw that into that threaded insert until it hopefully reaches the bottom of that brass insert. And then if I've done it right, I should be able to take my steel wire, feed that through the hole, and then tighten the bolt <laughs> until the wire is securely held in place. And hopefully, <laughs> all right, no more excuses. It's time to start assembling this thing. We're gonna need two lengths of wire that need to be the exact right length. Now, because I modeled this in 3D, I know exactly how long that is gonna be, which is in my case, 1,255 millimeters. Now I'm gonna mark that 1255 on my piece of wire, leaving a fair bit extra on either side. I'll show you why in just a second. Make a mark right there and then cut a little bit past it. And now we can take our wire and start threading it through all of the holes that we've got in these legs. Now on the first side here, we can just thread them all the way straight through one after the other until they can form a loop like this. Now on the other side here, and this took me a little while to figure out because the whole thing is gonna be twisted. I actually need to start by going the opposite way. Then I'll go back underneath over the next one and back through towards myself. 
And although this might seem a little weird right now, it will ensure that everything ends up nice and straight after effect. And now that we've got our wire threaded through all the parts and sticking out at our end, we need somehow to connect these two together. Now this is where I would normally use one of these really nice crimping tools that leaves just a tiny little metal piece. I couldn't find that tool locally and it hasn't arrived yet. So in the meantime, I'm gonna use a couple of these a little bit less attractive wire locks to attach these together. And now this is why I made the mark on either side of the wire because I can now just align these two marks and then I'll know that the wire will be the exact right length and I have a little bit of extra that I can use to clamp together with. All right, now let's see if I did this right and if I can get it to unfold the way it's supposed to. <laughs> I, it was not that hard the first time I did this. Okay, I don't know what I did wrong the last time, but hopefully it's right now. Hey, that looks kind of okay. Now you can definitely see the thing happening here that I was worried about when the wires end up being different lengths between the two pieces of wood. So I'm gonna try and spend a little bit of time getting all of these wire lengths exactly the same. Then we can tighten all the screws and hopefully it will stay like that. All right, so that looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? I've got everything to the point where all the wires are the same length. I've already tightened the bottom. Now it's just a matter of tightening all the screws in the top here. And that should make it so that we're now ready for the end caps. Now, as I said in the beginning, I printed two different end caps, one that goes in the top and one for the bottom. The top one here is pretty rounded with a relatively small print at the top. And for the bottom, we've got the same exact thing, just with a lot bigger of a surface area so that it's more stable against the floor. Oh, and by the way, I did print these completely solid just so that I get the most amount of strength out of them. Wham! Ready for the last step? We'll stick on some of these clear pads because we are finally ready for the tabletop, which in case I haven't told you, it's gonna be made out of glass. <sighs> hey! That feels pretty darn stable. It feels like it's super solid. Also, fun fact, did you know that it's way cheaper to buy a complete coffee table from Ikea that comes with a glass plate than it is to get just the glass plate from some supplier. Let's see what this looks like in front of my couch. And I also feel like we kind of have to do a strength test. So first of all, I think it's really cool that the legs still collapse into this pile of just sticks. Now, the big question is, how easy is it to set up now that we've got all the wire lengths the same? <laughs> Pretty easy. Let's see how much weight this can take. Because let's be honest, that's the thing that we're all curious about. All right, so, I mean. <laughs> I would call that a success. Not gonna do that with the glass top though. So there you have it, a integrity table that can actually take a bunch of weight. Now, yes, we did have to compromise a little bit in the fact that the sticks actually touch, but I think it's still made for a really great looking table. All right, so that will be it for this video. If you enjoyed watching, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time I upload something new. As for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. I don't want to try. You think you can stand on it? <laughs>